What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ben Gibbard, uh, here in Seattle, Washington at home. Uh, today, we are doing a top 10 show. You guys uh, all voted for your top 10 songs on the list, the big board we had online. And uh, we got over 14,028 votes. Um, and uh, we're just going to dive in. We're going to start at number 10, and we're going to make our way through the list. Um, I got to leave these right now. <clears throat> All right, here we go. <clears throat> I'm sorry. At number 10. Love compartment is inaccurately named. Everybody knows it, so I'm proposing a swift, orderly change. Behind its door, there's nothing to keep my fingers warm. All I find. Souvenirs from better times Before the gleam of your taillights fading To find yourself a better life I was searching for some legal documents so the rain beat down on the hood when I stumbled upon pictures I tried to forget and that's how this idea was drilled into my head It's too important To stay the way it's been but There's no blame For how our love did slowly fade but Now that it's gone it's like it wasn't there at all Here I rest Where disappointment and regret Collide Lying awake at night There's no blame for how our love did slowly fade. Now that it's gone, it's like it wasn't there at all. And here I rest where disappointment and regret collide, lying awake at night, all night. When I'm lying awake at night <clears throat> That of course is lack uh that is title and registration. Uh, coming in at number 10, the big Gibber Top 10 countdown. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day out there. Um, I got out for a, a long run around the empty streets of Seattle today. It's quite an eerie experience. Um, strangely beautiful. 
with nobody in the streets, but obviously I would I would take the hustle and bustle any day over what people are dealing with. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting Friday. Um, all right, this is this is at number nine. Your choice for number nine. And when I see you, I really see you upside down. But my brain knows better, picks you up and turns you around, turns you around, turns you around. And if you feel discouraged, there is a lack of color here. Please don't worry, lover. It's really bursting at the seams, I'm absorbing everything. The spectrum's A to Z. This is fact, not fiction, for the first time in years. And all the girls in every girly magazine can make me feel any less alone. I'm reaching for the phone. Call it 703 On your machine I slur a plea For you to come home But I know it's too late And I should have given you a reason to stay Given you a reason to stay Given you a reason to stay, given you a reason to stay. This is fact, not fiction, for the first time in years. Some throat coat. Oh, that pesky dryness. <clears throat> right, so this next one at number eight. <coughs> one I have not played yet. A lot of you guys have been asking for it. <clears throat> but uh, it is yet, is yet to make the cut. Not the cut. My sub-selection of your requests. Not for any reason. Um, I just figured we'd get to it at some point, and here we are. These songs are laid out, they're kind of jumping all over the place, capo style. I'm gonna retune a lot, but that's all right. Um, all right, here we go. <clears throat> this is the moment that you know that you told her that you loved her, but you don't. You 
touch her skin and then you think that she is beautiful but she don't mean a thing to me yeah she is beautiful but she don't mean a thing to me I spent two weeks in Silver Lake The California sun cascading down my face There was a girl with light brown streaks and She was beautiful, but she didn't mean a thing to me Yeah, she was beautiful, but she didn't mean a thing to me I wanted to believe that all the words that I was speaking as we moved together in the dark And all the friends that I was telling all the playful misspellings and every bite I gave that left a mark When tiny vessels oozed into your neck Form the bruises that you said you didn't want to fade, but they did, and so did I that day. All I see are dark gray clouds in the distance moving closer with every hour. So when you'd ask, is something wrong? I think you're damn right there is. We can't talk about it now. We can't talk about it now. One last touch, and then you'll go. And we'll pretend that it meant something so much more. But it was vile, and it was cheap. And you are beautiful, but you don't mean a thing to me. Yeah, you are beautiful, but you don't mean a thing to me. Yeah, you are beautiful, but you don't mean a thing to me. <clears throat> All right. Years ago, <clears throat> um, not even years ago, I guess it is technically years ago, we were seeing an interview with Mike Mills of R.E.M. And he was discussing their song, The One I Love. And uh, he said he found it kind of amusing that people would sing that song to each other in the audience. Because while the song is called The One I Love, and the song does go, this goes out to The One I Love, uh, <clears throat> the song is a fairly... Uh, it's a fairly kind of brutal song. Um, and he found it amusing that people would sing that to each other. And I must admit, <clears throat> when we play that song live and I see couples singing it to each other, <laughs> I think it's sweet. Uh, but I also find it amusing in a very similar manner. Because clearly you guys are smart enough to know what that song's about. But I find it kind of amusing to see people who are at the show together singing you are beautiful but you don't mean a thing to me <laughs> to each other just kind of great um <clears throat> all right we're at number seven now and uh <clears throat> uh this is also a song that i have yet to play on this show um so we'll just get right into it <laughs>
God bless the daylight, the sugary smell of springtime, remembering when you were mine in a still suburban town. When every Thursday I'd brave those mountain passes, and you'd skip your early classes, and we'd learn how our bodies were. God damn the black night with all its foul temptations. I become what I always hated when I was with you then. We looked like giants in the back of my gray subcompact, fumbling to make contact as the other slept inside. Oh, together there in a shroud of frost, the mountain air began to pass through every pane of weathered glass and I held you closer than anyone would ever get Remember the JAMC and reading aloud from magazines. Well, I don't know about you, but I spare on my name, they could smell it on me. And I've never been too good with secrets, no. Oh, together there, in a shroud of frost, the mountain air began to pass through every pane of weathered glass, and I held you closer. All right. Um, why don't we do another song? Uh, this will be number six on the Gibber Top Ten Countdown. Uh, this will be number six of all your requests. Uh, and, uh, and why don't we take some questions after that? I will, so get them lined up, think about what you want to ask. And, uh, after this next tune, we'll, we'll dig into those. Like I should have gotten all my guitars out and had them all tuned <laughs> for all these songs. It's kind of all over the map today. All right. All right, close enough. Here we go. Your palms are sweating, I'm barely listening to last emails. I'm staring at the asphalt, wondering what's buried underneath where I
Final sticker with big block letters hid here into my chest. Tells your new friend I'm just a visitor here. I am not permanent. The only thing keeping me. You seem so out of context in this gaudy apartment complex. A stranger with a door key explaining that I'm just visiting. And I am finally seeing why I was the one worth leaving. Why I was the one worth leaving. Seem so out of context in this gaudy apartment complex. A stranger with your door key explaining that I'm just visiting. And I am finally seeing why I was the one worth leaving. Why I was the one worth leaving. The district sleeps alone tonight after the bars turn out their lights and send the auto swerving into the loneliest evening. And I am finally seeing why I was the one worth leaving. Why I was the one worth leaving. Why I was the one worth leaving. All right. All right. Let's get to the questions here. Somebody asked me, uh, Adam Smith asks me, how often are you recognized in public? Not that often, you guys. If I am in a <clears throat> record store or maybe at a show that is uh, <clears throat> uh, patronized by people who like the sim similar music or you know, um, uh, that, that will happen there. Or if I'm, you know, we are on tour and we are, I'm walking around within a two block radius of the venue, but it's not that often. I think one of the nice things about being a musician, uh, is that most people kind of probably know your music, but don't know what you look like. So, uh, but if you see me on the street, come up and say hello, obviously. And, after this COVID-19 thing is over, we can shake hands, take a photo, whatever you want. Uh, but until then, if you see me on the street, uh, know that we will remain six feet apart. Uh, but yes, always, if you see me, come up and say hi. Uh, I'm always down to chat. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. What were you doing? Julia Miller asked me, what was I doing during Grumpy Beard Live? Uh, Grumpy Beard Live is a show that our keyboard player, Zach Ray, is doing on Instagram. Um, I do not drink, but I made a mocktail and sat with Zach and watched him answer questions, and it was very entertaining. Uh, Zach is an incredibly intelligent and funny person, um, and uh, I don't think that he gets out in front enough because I think, I think uh, the more time you'd spend with him, I think we'd really enjoy him. He's a wonderful dude. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, Caitlin Treat asks, how often are you stopped on your runs? Uh, not that often. Um, you know, maybe if I'm out on the trail somewhere and uh, somebody stops me. Um, like I said, I'm always down to chat. I think one of the funniest things that happened was last summer I was on a run in uh, the North Cascade. It was a really remote 
and I'm not saying this to humble brag. This is what it was. It was a, a 35 mile big loop through the North Cascades. And uh, we came across these two younger people, maybe in their late, uh, late 20s, early 30s. They were through hiking the entire trail. And uh, we kind of chatted with them for a sec. And then we kind of made our way out a bit. And then they followed us. And the guy was like, wait, you're Ben Gibbard. And I think I said to him, how weird is this now? <laughs> because the last, this is maybe the last place you'd expect to see someone like me would be in a very remote section of the North Cascades National Park. Uh, and he, they were really great. And we took some photos and it was, it was fun. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, Jamie Furlong asks, what are your favorite funniest, favorite funniest story or memory you have of Jenny Lewis? Um, there are so many. Um, she, we have been friends now for almost 20 years. Um, and, uh, to kind of like nail down just one would seem kind of, uh, I have a lot that I, I, I'm not at liberty to share with you. <laughs> she probably wouldn't want me sharing them, but, um, I will just say this. I, uh, I am just, I'm constantly in awe of her spirit and her talent. And, you know, I think one of the things that is, is so amazing to me about Jenny is for someone who gets on stage and is such a star in front of people. She has this like star quality. She is one of the most down to earth and kind of approachable people and honest and uh, and uh, kind of wonderful humans that I know. So that's not really an answer, but we'll call it that for now. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's do let's do two let's do two more questions. I'll get back to it. Um, <clears throat> somebody, uh, Brandon uh, Trimoli Tr Trimboli asks, if you could have named the band something other than DCFC, what would it have been? Uh, this is kind of a roundabout answer to that, but you know when we slash I named the band Def Cat for Cutie in 1997. You know, the internet existed, but it certainly wasn't, you know, the force that it is now or that it became over the next 23 years or whatever. And I would do a lot of interviews, you know, smaller interview zines and things like that. And it would always come to the last question and they would ask, okay, I have one more question. I just have to ask you, where did you get that name? And for a lot of people, they, you know, they, they didn't know the reference because it's a fairly obscure reference. Um, and it's a piece of information that was not as readily available in the world. And I remember thinking, man, I really wish we would have just named our band The Killers because that way, you know, it would just be like, that's the name, you know? And I say that no disrespect whatsoever to The Killers. We're friends of those guys. They're a great band. They're great people. But, you know, just giving yourself a name that's just a name is so much easier than something that is this weird, obscure reference. Um, I'm glad I did it now. I'm glad we have the name now. Um, but, uh, you know, in the early days, it was tough because you got asked that question all the time and it got annoying. <clears throat> OK, uh, last question here before we move on. <clears throat> uh, let's see, where was that? Uh, somebody asked me. Uh, how do you decide which song goes to each project is i.e. Death Cab, Pulse Service, solo work or other? Um, well, when we were making the Pulse Service record all those years ago, it, you know, everything that Jimmy sent me was music that was for that project. So there was no doubt that, um, you know, the music began with him and then ended with me. So uh, it was natural that that would be a Pulse Service stuff. Uh, as far as Death Cab and solo stuff goes, um, you know, I'm constantly writing songs and, uh, you know, Death Cab, you know, you know, always has first crack, so to speak, at everything I write. Um, but, you know, there are some songs that just kind of are very kind of folky, acoustic-y that don't quite meet the mold for a particular record we're making or whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just kind of, I just feel like, you know, you kind of know. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's the answer to that. Um, all right, let's get back into it. Um, I am going to move to the piano and number five is a song that I have never played in this format before. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do my best to get through it. But it might be a little bit wonky. Um, because it, it's not very fitting in this particular setting, but we'll see how it works. How I wish you could see the potential 
potential of you and me. It's like a book elegantly bound, but in a language that you can't read just yet. You gotta spend some time, love. You gotta spend some time with me. And I know that you'll find love. I will possess your heart. There are days when outside your window I see my reflection as I slowly pass And I long for that mirrored perspective We will be lovers, lovers at last You gotta spend some time, love You gotta spend some time with me And I know that you'll find love I will possess your heart. You gotta spend some time, love. You gotta spend some time with me. And I know that you'll find love. I will possess your heart. You reject my advances and desperate pleas I won't let you let me down so easily so easily you gotta spend some time love you gotta spend some time with me and I know that you'll find love I will possess your heart. I will possess your heart. I will possess your heart. <laughs> I mean, that one's a little wonky like that. We don't have Nick <clears throat> thrown down that bass line. It's, it's not. It's not great. <clears throat> you know, the the bass line is the glue in that song. Without without him, it's almost not worth playing. <laughs> All right, we're on the number four. <clears throat> to live where our soul meets body and let the sun wrap its arms around me and bathe my skin in water cool and cleansing feel feel what it's like to be new is in my head there is a greyhound station where I send my thoughts to far off destinations so they may have a chance of finding a place where far more suited than here. Guess what we'll discover. We turn the dirt with our palms cupped like shovels, but I know our filthy hands can wash one another's. Not one speck will, and I do believe it's true. There are roads left in both of our shoes. But if the silence takes you, then I hope it takes me too. So brown eyes, I'll hold you here. Cause you're the only song I want to hear. A melody softly soaring through my atmosphere. 
here Where a soul meets body Where a soul needs body And I do believe it's true That there are roads left in both of our shoes But if the silence takes you Then I hope it saves me too So brown eyes I'll hold you here you're the only song I want to hear A melody softly soaring through my atmosphere A melody softly soaring through my atmosphere A melody softly soaring through my atmosphere a melody softly soaring through my atmosphere. <clears throat> All right. Back over here. <clears throat> We're down to the top three, you guys. Uh, I want to take a quick second <clears throat> to say a word about today's uh charitable sponsor, and that is uh, the organization uh, Americans for Immigrant Justice. This, uh, this was a request from my, uh, my friend Annie Hathaway, uh, who's been working with this group for a very long time. And, uh, and I think, you know, a lot of the groups that we have been supporting here on the show have been local Seattle groups, and that has been by design. But I think it also is important to recognize that in this particular kind of climate that we're dealing with right now, not a political climate, but just uh, the climate of people getting sick and people being quarantined, uh, there are innumerable people who are in detention at our borders who have a right to representation and uh, to have their day in court. And I think, you know, the immigration in this uh, issue in this country is, is a very hot button issue. But I think that we should all be able to agree, not only as Americans, but as human beings, that everyone that enters this country or lives in this country, legally or illegally, is due uh, <clears throat> respect and dignity. And uh, I believe that everyone uh, in this country, be it citizen, be it immigrant, be it undocumented, be it guest worker, whatever, have, what have you, is um, they have the right to be treated like a human being. And uh, at this current moment, um, we are forgetting that we have innumerable people detained at our borders that require uh, legal assistance. Um, and are, that are due legal assistance, quite literally. So um, I would hope that everyone watching this show, if you have uh, a, a, a small kind of uh, bit of uh, available cash um, and you're enjoying the show so far, that uh, you might make a donation to them because they are uh, very much in need of uh, financial donations so that... Um, uh, the people that are awaiting processing and uh, uh, can uh, have access to uh, legal representation, which is not free. So um, moving on to number three. Uh, I'm actually surprised this was number three. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> but uh, you guys voted. I'm just playing the tunes. Here we go.
Love of mine, someday you will die, but I'll be close behind. I'll follow you into the dark. No blinding lights, no tunnels to gates of white. Just our hands clasped so tight, waiting for the hint of a spark. If heaven and hell decide. That they both are satisfied. Illuminate the notes on their vacancy signs. If there's no one beside you when your soul embarks, then I'll follow you into the dark. Catholic school, as vicious as Roman rule. I got my knuckles bruised by a lady in black. And I held my tongue as she told me, "Son, fear is the heart of love." So I never went back. If heaven and hell decide that they both are satisfied, illuminate the notes. On their vacancy signs, if there's no one beside you when your soul embarks, then I'll follow you into the dark. You and me have seen everything to see, from Bangkok to Calgary, and the soles of your shoes. All worn down. The time for sleep is now. It's nothing to cry about. 'Cause we'll hold each other soon in the blackest of rooms. If heaven and hell decide. That they both are satisfied. Illuminate the notes on their vacancy signs. If there is no one beside you when your soul embarks, then I'll follow you into the dark. I'll follow you into the dark. Like I said, surprise number three. I thought I thought it would be number one, but you know what? It shows what I know. All these years, I've been making set lists. Should have been doing this all along. Let you guys make the set lists. <laughs> Although I feel we wouldn't get a chance to play some of the stuff we want to play. Um, when we do make the set list, I always try to make sure that we're playing the uh, the hits, so to speak. But also kind of rolling in some new stuff. Not too much that you guys get bored, but uh, enough that uh, you guys are reminded that we have a new record out. Um, all right, uh, all right. Here we go. This is number two. <clears throat> um, played this a couple days ago. Uh, first time on guitar, so this will be the second time. Atlantic was born today, and I'll tell you how. The clouds above opened up and let it out.
I was standing on the surface of a perforated sphere when the water filled every hole. And thousands upon thousands made an ocean making islands where no island should go. Oh no. Most people were overjoyed, they took to their boat. I thought it less like a lake, more like a mole. The rhythm of my footsteps crossing flatlands to your door have been silence forevermore. And the distance is quite simply much too far for me to roll. It seems farther than ever before. Oh no, I need you so much closer 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 So come on so come on, come on. So come on, come on. So come on, come on. <clears throat> All right, folks, we're at number one. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> before uh, we, we divulge number one, I want to tell a quick story about how my year began. This is a little bit of a gross story, but I think you'll understand uh, what I'm talking about when I tell it. So uh, Rachel and I, uh, we went down uh, to Ojai to visit some, in California, to visit some uh, friends of ours and spend New Year's with them. It's kind of become a little tradition of ours. You know, we go and see our friends. We don't see that often. And, uh, you know, we kind of do the normal things. And uh, we had... Uh, we booked into this hotel, which will remain nameless. <clears throat> nice hotel in Ojai. And uh, we got there on the 30th. And we dropped our bags. We went, went over and hung out with our friends. It was fun. We came back. Uh, and then, you know, it was the 31st, New Year's Eve day. Um, you know, we, we kind of hung out for a bit. Then we went to our friend's house, made dinner. You know, celebrate the new year, blah, blah, blah. 
came back to the hotel three in the morning and uh, immediately went right to sleep. And the next morning, um, you know, he got up normal time. And uh, as I was kind of stirring in bed, Rachel said, holy shit, what is that on the bathroom floor? And I said, I don't know. And I looked up and it was an animal turd. I think it's important to mention that we did not have an animal in the room. The doors had been locked. The windows were closed. There were no other entrances or exits that we could determine into this hotel room. And I kind of went up there, looked at it, I was like, that is an animal turd of indistinct origin. And uh, I, you know, I did what anybody would do. I picked it up, I flushed it. And, uh, and I went to the office of the hotel and I explained the situation. And they were like, well, did you leave it on the floor? And I was like, no, I definitely did not. I flushed it. And she was like, well, you know, I wasn't asking for a free night or anything like that. I was just trying to get down to the bottom of this. And I was asking her the question, like, did anybody else go in there? You know, it was, you know, I know we had the do not disturb on, but did anybody go in the room? No, no, no. We would never go in the room with the do not disturb. Okay, this and that. So the very first element of the new year was a mystery turd on the floor the hotel room we were renting. And honestly, as we kind of look at the kind of situation that we found ourselves in at this point, kind of starting to look back on that, uh, that mystery turd and kind of going like, it's kind of a, it's kind of a bad omen, <laughs> kind of a bad omen for the year. Uh, and we'll never know. The hardest thing is never knowing. Uh, so after, uh, on that note, on that gross note, I'll leave you with number one. You guys, thanks for coming and watching. Uh, uh, tomorrow's show will be what I'm calling Dealer's Choice, which means I'm going to pick the songs I want to play. It's going to be some covers and stuff, some of my favorite tunes and like, and uh, that will be Saturday. Sunday will be the all request cover show, uh, and that will be the last of the daily shows. Uh, so uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, here we go. You're number one. Had to be this one, right? It would have been funny if it was like underwater or something. Like I'm thinking it's a sign The freckles in our eyes are mirrors Images and when we kiss, they're perfectly lined. I have to speculate that God Himself did make us into corresponding shapes like puzzle pieces from clay. And true, it may seem like a stretch. But it's thoughts like this that catch my troubled head when you're away, when I am missing you to death. When you're out there on the road for several weeks of shows, and when you scan the radio, oh, I hope this song will guide you home. They will see us waving from such great heights. Come down now, they'll say. Yeah. Everything looks perfect from far away. Come down now. Will stay. Yeah. I tried my best to leave this on your machine, but the persistent beat sounded thin upon the city. And that, frankly, will not fly. 
You will hear the shrillest highs and lowest lows below. And those down as this is guiding your heart. They will see us waiting from such great heights. Come down now. They'll say. Everything looks perfect from far away. Come down now, we'll stay. Yeah. All right, thanks for hanging out, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.